All right, everybody. Well, welcome to our Wednesday ongoing coaching meeting. This is week four of a series we've been in talking about movement servants, and we're going to conclude that series today. So let me kind of sum up some of what we've been saying. I want to give you just a few more thoughts that I've had about this, and then I want to take you through some real specific needs that some movement families have that you could get involved in serving. So today's going to be super practical, I think, and uh, we'll have a great time together. And then we'll uh, head to breakouts and we can talk more afterwards. So what is a movement servant? You guys know we've been doing this four weeks now. This is week four. A movement servant is somebody who serves, like me and you, it can be anybody. It's not doesn't have to be any um, particular person with any particular skill set. It's just anybody who serves either a single movement or a movement family in some way, helping it strengthen and expand into unengaged areas. I'm looking at my notes here so I can put it in the chat for you. There you go. That's a movement servant, serving a single movement, movement servant, serving a single movement or movement family in some way, helping it strengthen and expand into unengaged areas. Okay. And then the other thing we've been talking about, the statistic of this series that I'm wanting to just ruin you with, honestly, I don't want you to forget this. I want this to make you go, man, what does this mean for me? Is this copy and paste to the chat. You guys hopefully know it by now. And that is that 90% of movements are started by other movements. They were saying 80 to 90%. Now they're saying 90% of movements are started by other movements. So if 100 new movements get started this year, chances are 90 of them will be started by existing movements. And you guys may know there's about 2,000 active movements. This is a level five or stage five on the CPM continuum. You may be familiar with that. Multiple streams of fourth generation and beyond. There's over 2,000 of those active in the world today. And those 2,000 plus are responsible for 90% of the new movements that are starting. So here's the question I want to pose to you today. Very simple. If this is true, that 90% of movements are started by other movements, what percentage of your time this year should be spent on serving movements? And what percentage of your time this year should be spent on catalyzing movements? So we want to be a part of movements, right? And now we know that 90% of movements are started by other movements and we can serve them to help them expand into new areas and start new movements. So if that's true, shouldn't the implication be that in some way we all want to serve? So what I'm asking you, what percentage of your time this year do you want to serve? You may say, hey, if 90% of movements are started by other movements, this year I want to spend at least 10% at least of my time serving movements, 90% still trying to catalyze. Or you may hear that and say, hey, if 90% of movements are started by other movements, I'm going 50-50. I mean, my, my greatest chance of starting movements and being a part of it is through other movements. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to 50% of my time this year, I'm going to serve movements. I'm going to figure out how to do that. 50% I'm going to catalyze. Or you may say, if 90% of movements are started by other movements, I'm going to spend 90% of my time <laughs> serving these movements to start other movements and 10% of my time catalyzing since 90% of the new ones are going to come out of the existing ones. I don't know which one of those or some other one should be yours. I'm just asking you to pray about it. I'm asking you to consider what it, what percentage of your time should be spent serving movements this year. Now, let me share with you one thing that the Lord has really challenged me about and just tell me if this is, um, if, if this challenges you as well. I felt like maybe over the past six months or a year, as I've learned about movement servants, that the Lord's been asking Chris, what do you care more about? Starting movements like yourself or seeing movements started? What do, you, what do you care more about? I'd ask you the same question. What, 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 is, what do you care most? What do you think most about? What do you care most about? You starting movements? That's good. Obviously, we want to start movements. Or seeing movements started regardless of what your role would be. Because if I care most about me starting movements, then clearly I'm going to spend 100% of my time trying to start a movement, trying to catalyze a movement, right? Because that's what I care most about. I'm in the movement thing, Chris. I'll just tell you, Chris, I'm in the movement. I want to start a movement. I'm going to, I want, we all know God starts movements, right? But, but sometimes we can think, hey, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to be on the front lines. I'm going to start a movement. And again, that's not all bad. But obviously, if you're in this thinking, I'm going to start movements, that's how movements are going to get started. I'm going to start them. Then we're going to spend 100% of our time catalyzing. But but if you care more about seeing movements start than even starting them yourself, then you'll be less concerned about whether or not you catalyze them and more concerned about following God wherever he leads and playing whatever role he would have you to play, even if it was to spend a lot of extra time serving. 
Perhaps one of the ways God is going to let many of us be a part of movements is not only through movements we catalyze, and hopefully all of us catalyze some, but what if God's going to let many of us be a part of many more movements than we otherwise would have been a part of because we get involved with existing movements and help them to multiply? You see, if it's mainly about, hey, God, I want to start a movement. I'm, I'm starting out. You kind of end this thinking, I'm going to start a movement. That's kind of about you. It's kind of about me. But if we're in this, just saying, Lord, I want to see movement started, whatever my role is, whether I'm a part of it or not, maybe I'm just praying about it. I want to see movement started. Then that's about God and his glory and his mission being accomplished in this world, regardless of what part you play in it. You know, used to, there was a group of us that would pray often for revival in our country. This was um, when I was living in Lubbock. And often as we were praying for revival, of course, we would say, Lord, bring revival and use us. Bring revival, Lord, and do it through us. That's a, that's a good prayer, right? That's not a bad prayer. <laughs> but we also started praying, Lord, we want revival so much that whether you use us to bring it or not, please bring revival for your glory so that your church would turn back to you again. Do you see the difference? And it's kind of subtle, right? Because the first prayer is not such a bad one. Lord, bring revival and do it through me. It's awesome. But I think it's kind of like what we're talking about with serving movements. Lord, bring movements. And if I get to catalyze, great. But if I don't, no problem. No big deal. I just want to be a part of seeing movements multiply on the earth so that more people are worshiping and glorifying you. And one thing that's, I guess, a little tragic to me, and maybe we've seen this, some of us, as we've you know, transitioned to DMM. And Stan says, really, he's seen it some with missionaries. One of the struggles right now, you guys listen to this in missions and sending out missionaries, is there's so many opportunities for new missionaries to go and serve, which would immediately put them in a movement and immediately put them in a place where they can help a movement to multiply. But guess what many of them say? I don't want to do that. I want to catalog someone. That's not wrong. I mean, if that's what the Lord's calling them to do, but what, what what's going on if every missionary or Every one of us in pursuing movements is saying, that's good. I, I mean, I hope that happens, but I want to be on the front lines. That's it kind, of, it, it kind of makes it, you guys, sometimes I think for me, movements can be about me. But hopefully you're in this because it's about God and about his glory and you play, you're, we're but unworthy servants, right? And we're playing whatever role God would give us to play. So I know what Stan is hoping, and obviously I'm hoping, is that more people that we could send out as missionaries would say, hey, um, yeah, I could go learn a language and catalyze on the front lines, and I'll go do that if that was, that's what God wants. But maybe God might send me, if 90% of movements are started by other movements, to just go full-time, move overseas, and serve in a movement. Maybe I'll be more effective in seeing movements that way than the first way. All I'm saying, you guys, is I, I think your hearts are right. And, I, you know, I always ask the Lord to examine my heart. I want my heart to be right. Let's be about seeing movements start more than us starting movements, right? Because these things we're wanting to see, it's for God, not for us. And it's for his glory, not for ours. And that's how we started. And I hope that's how we'll end. And I think movement servants, this whole vision invites us to humble ourselves and say, maybe with some percentage of our time, we could be more effective actually not catalyzing. Maybe with some percentage of our time, we could be more effective in seeing movements if it's about God and his glory, serving other people that are really seeing some awesome stuff right now. So my challenge really in this series is to spend some time, some percentage of your time this year serving movements. And I've given you three reasons why. Number one, it'll help to strengthen that movement and help them expand into new areas. You're a part of a movement and then you're a part of helping a movement multiply. Number two, the DNA when you're serving movements often rubs off on you. Those of you that have done this already know this. And number three, sometimes like the story I told you the first week, they may join you. The movement family may be excited about what's going on in your area and they may join you in working in your area as well. So there's just no reason not to get involved. Now you may say, hey, Chris, here's the thing. That all sounds great. I'd love to serve a movement. That'd be awesome. But what would I do? Like, I don't know if I have a skill set that they need. I don't, <laughs> let me just tell you about, let me just, and you're going to see this in a minute. So many movements, what they need doesn't require any particular skill set. It requires willingness and time. Do you have those things? Some of you say, well, not, not too much. Well, can you create some time or, you know, say, Lord, yes, I'm willing because so many of the things I'm going to read off in a minute don't require a skill set. Now, some things movement need, movements need do require a skill set. Like I know one movement, there's um, a lady on one of our calls right now, and she's done publishing in the past, and she's a professional editor. And so one movement is 
uh, you know, putting out some books and she's helping them use her, you know, editing abilities. Um, she's using those to help this movement get these books out. You may say, I don't have that. That's fine. So there may be some needs they have that you can't meet, but there's often many needs they have that all of us could meet if we had the willingness and we could make some time. So is this for everybody or is this just for a few people that have a particular skill set? This is for anybody that wants to be a part of movements. And I think that's all of you. That's why you're here. Movements or being a movement servant with some percentage of your time is for anybody that wants to be a part of movements. And I think if I asked for a show of hands, we'd all say, I want to be a part. So if you want to be a part, 90% of movements are started by other movements. Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's get involved in serving movements too and, uh, and, and see what uh, the Lord does. Okay, here's what I want to do. We spent about the last six months, myself and John and Tyler, they lead our other coaching calls, meeting with movement families that you probably already know because we brought them on our call or introduced them to you. And we've just been asking them, hey, what are your needs? If we had, you know, you know between our coaching calls, we have just over 100 people on these calls. If, if we could deploy 100 people to help you or, you know, multiple movement families, what could we do? We're a bunch of Westerners for the most part. <laughs> is, there, is there some way we could help? And so we got a list from each of these five movement families of some things they may could use help with. And so what I'd like to do is just read it to you. It's just a couple pages. And what I want you to do is take a pen and, and a sheet of paper, or you can use your phone, and just anything that stands out to you that you're like, I could do that, or I have that skill set, or I have the time needed for that, or I'm willing to do that. Would you like write that down, <laughs> you know, and let us know? Because what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through these needs. And then at the end, I'm going to have you go to a Google form. We're all going to do it together. And I'm going to, if you're willing to be a movement servant, willing for us to help connect you to some movements in 2024, we're going to have you fill out the form, tell us any skill set you have that could be helpful to movements and just how much time you could commit to it. And then what we're going to do is take all of your responses and start matching people up with needs. Does that make sense? So let me show you some of the needs first. This is not an exhaustive list. You can't really just pick one of these and say that's mine because we may have other people that are already engaged there, but this is giving you an idea. And then after we're done with this list, we're going to have you fill out a form and, you know, and give us an idea of what kind of time you have and what kind of different skills and, um, you know, different giftings you may have that could help some of these movements. 